Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. I've been excited about this one for a while. Today we have Steve Dorman, who's one of the legends of direct response marketing on television. Steve wrote and directed and produced six successful infomercials that grossed over $300 million. He created Curiosity Perfume and New Glow Cosmetics, which were the most successful fragrances ever sold on television. He is the author of $12 billion of inside marketing secrets discovered through Direct TV. I don't know if you can see that there. I got it right here. And currently, he runs a company from the lab and Inside Beautiful that curates beauty products to appear in retail. Steve, thanks for joining me. Absolutely. A pleasure, Jeremy. Steve, since it's Inspired Insider, could you tell me what's been, you've had a, a great career and continues to be, what's been the lowest moment and how you push through those, those tough times? Wow. Oh, no, I'm depressed. Um, I think I think that I think that's probably uh, that's probably such a pertinent question because um, I think that the older that you get, the more difficult it is to still see things in a childlike way and have maintain your curiosity and your childlike enthusiasm for trying new things mm -hmm. um and when you are innovative you never know what's going to work and what isn't going to work and so um so picking yourself up again and starting new and starting fresh when something doesn't work financially, mm -hmm. uh, I think is probably one of the most difficult things. And I've had that happen to me a number of times. <clears throat> I think, you know, if I was, if I was looking at the world through uh, 20 something eyes, when you're about to enter college or when you're in college, I think your fantasy is that you basically, at least it used to be. I don't know. I don't know for kids now, but um, it used to be that life was pretty much a straight line. You know, you graduate college, you'd find a career. You know, maybe you change jobs, but you'd stay kind of pretty much where you are. Right. And in in my life, that hasn't been the case at all. I mean, it's like things that I had no idea were going to play a part in my life. Um, ended up playing a part later in ways that I had no idea that it would. Like what? Uh, um, I think that, um, well, lots of things. I mean, I'd always, uh, uh, one of my big hobbies, and it's been kind of a lifelong hobby, has been photography. I was interested in photography from the time I was 11 or 12. And um, I actually did some, some test shootings for Playboy and other things when I was like 18 years old and decided I didn't want to pursue it as a career. But the things that I learned just from working with people and shooting people and seeing how well they looked, you know, really played a part in this. I mean, the other thing just from a technical point of view that I did in the boardroom infomercials that nobody would ever dare attempt unless they really knew what they were doing is I got the doctors who were all non-professional performers to talk directly to camera. Yeah, yeah. That's Everybody tough. shoots them from over here like they're doing a news report. Mm. But I just saw the power and the intimacy of a doctor talking to a patient one-on-one. -on -one. You're taking it remotely right. from over here. So little things like that that most people wouldn't dare to do um, – I was able to do really, really successfully mm -hmm. and get performances out of them. I mean, some easier than others, but I think that that made a difference. Um, and I think that, um, you know, I, and I think that there's a real duality with a lot of the marketers that I uh, have, you know, encountered is that everybody is kind of looking for the formula 
a formula of what's going to work. You want the blueprint, yeah, yeah. And it, and it, I saw the same thing in the infomercial business with the the pod situation that we talked about. Right. Everybody followed the same formula. Um. And that's such a a powerful thing. Uh that you have to be aware of. I mean, even when we had these incredibly successful shows with Boardroom, they were saying, a couple people at Boardroom were saying, well, what if what if we did what everybody else was doing and put the commercials back, you know, in there? That It's working for everybody else. But I knew where that led, and the only way I knew is by trying it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, um, so I think that... Um, um, you know, I was reading about a, a very well-known British photographer whose work I just came upon uh, a week ago, and I was reading some of his quotes, and he was saying, you know, as soon as you've developed a technique and you've mastered the technique, you could spend the rest of your career doing exactly the same thing, but you're never going to grow. Mm-hmm. It just becomes mechanical. So it depends what's important to you in life. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you if you don't want to take chances and you just want to repeat yourself, you know, a different product, same formula, you can do that. But yeah. uh, I, uh, unfortunately, I've never taken that easy road. You know, you mentioned a key point, which is losing that childlike way. Mm-hmm. What was the time you felt you lost a little bit of that? Um... Because most people, I like how you phrase it. Most people wouldn't phrase it like that. And I kind of, that's interesting. Well, I think that, um, I think that you have, there's a tendency when one is successful to want to hang on to what you know works. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of guts to try and break that, to try and reach the next level, the next plateau. Right. So I, I think that there's two times in one's life. One of it is when you're very successful, mm-hmm. something starts not working like it should or was, and then you want to recreate exactly the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's that's way number one. So what, what Wait, time was that for you? <clears throat> Um, oh, I think there's a propensity for doing it. I think there was a little bit of a propensity or a, a pull to do that with boardroom where we had five successful infomercials out of the gate mm-hmm. and you just kind of want to repeat it. Right, right. So, um, um, so I always tried to stretch. I was always very aware of that. And sometimes it paid off and sometimes it didn't. I mean, mm-hmm. how do you make the third show better than the second show? Right. In that case, we did a, a live show from Arizona State University, helicopter shots, live studio audience. I mean, had a Nobel Prize winner in the audience. I mean, how do you keep pushing it? <laughs> uh, and then there's um, uh, and then th- there's when you've just failed, whether it be with your all your own money and things are looking pretty gray. How do you pick yourself up right, yeah. and have the courage to start all over again yeah. and not repeat what you did before, which is what you all know. And and they're both very, very difficult. It both tastes a lot of yeah. going inside rather than and getting out of your head. So what did you do at that time? What was one of those moments you wanted to need to pull yourself up? Um Oh, I think that um, I think that with um, I think I mean I, I, there were there were a number of things where boy I mean uh, there was the uh, not getting financing for the home video dating um, the skincare company I did New Glow um, it wasn't taking off and we didn't have the financial resources to make it take off. So, um, I, uh, I sold it to my partner and then I was starting all over again. In that case, that was kind of interesting because that's, 
was right after I let go of that that uh, things with the boardroom started cementing. So mm. that was a case of, you know, a door closes, one or two open. Mm -hmm. um, but you, I think I think the courageous thing is you have to really be ready to let go of something in order for that window to open. Mm -hmm. If you're still hanging on... <laughs> How do you mentally do that, though? Because at the time, now you could say that, but at the time it was probably really difficult. You go it's through this, you know, this, you, it's your baby almost, yeah. and you're like, what do I do next? How did you pull yourself mentally out of that, that state, I guess? I, I think that, um, I mean, in my personal case, I did a lot of self-hypnosis work. Hmm. Um, I did a lot of... Um, self-hypnosis work of just going inside because the 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 chatter in the head will kill you yeah chatter in the head will kill you <laughs> so um i uh uh did a lot of a lot of inner work a lot of just letting go a lot of long walks um and a curiosity following the curiosity i mean that's the thing you have to be able to let the conscious mind go and pay attention to what's gaining your focus because that's you know the thing with boardroom for example was was kind of interesting they uh they were interested in getting in the infomercial world because they saw kevin trudeau had a book on the air mm -hmm. and so uh brian kurtz was talking to a couple of companies about maybe doing it with them and brian was a subscriber to my newsletter that's what the connection was there and um and brian kept calling me up for advice and he sent me over the contract of what one of these things could do and i started mulling it over and thinking about it and i said well show me what you want to do and everything and I mean, he was asking me just for my opinion. It was just uh, from a friend to a friend. Right, right. And I said, you know, we could do this together. And um, we started outlining the parameters of that. Mm. And it took a couple months. But I that came out of nowhere. But it, yeah. it only came out because there was an openness to seeing that possibility. Right. And if I hadn't let go of the other one, that wouldn't have been there. Mm-hmm. So, Steve, what's been the proudest moment? This interview. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I got this on air. It's recorded. <laughs> uh, the proudest moment was... Um, I Boy, I've had a few of them. Yeah. I think the proudest moment was finishing the film and actually seeing it play in Los Angeles. The divorce. For the divorce musical. musical. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think that was one. Mm -hmm. um, working with the people at Boardroom and uh, meeting the doctors and the two Nobel Prize winners and working mm -hmm. with John Cleese and Hugh Downs um, and really having affirmations from, I mean, Hugh Downs said I was the best director that he'd ever worked with, wow. which amazing. meets a lot. Yeah. Um, being able, and, and actually... The thing I get so much joy out of is trying something a little bit different and not knowing if it's going to work and then seeing it come together. Mm -hmm. That's There's a lot of joy in that. Yeah.